Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. I am so glad you joined us today. This is a vitally important topic, one especially dear to my heart as we study about the armor of God, how we can be at peace in the midst of a war that is raging. I'm glad you're with us. Welcome to Hope Sabbath School. Welcome to the team. Good to be with you again. Yes. Always blessed to have you here. I'm excited today because Stephanie's teaching, mm -hmm. and it's a great topic, isn't it? A vitally important topic. So welcome again. And we've got some team members joining us remotely. Let's see who's with us. Travis, always good to have you with us. Glad you're here. Leah, great to have you with us too. And Haiti, great to have you with us. What a great team. And we're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family too. Sometimes people say, Derek, when the teacher asks an interactive question, I raise my hand. <laughs> That's good. Write to us, sshope at hopetv.org. We'd love to hear how God is blessing you through an in-depth, interactive study of His Word. And write to us and let us know what's going on in your part of the world. Some of you have started study groups using our outline that you can download from our website. We'd love to hear what God is doing. Here's a note from Steve on our Facebook page. Steve writes, My wife and I love Hope Sabbath School. Let's yeah. give them a wave. The format is great, Steve writes, but mostly I enjoy hearing the different points of view about a particular scripture, what it means to the individual team members. It's also reassuring to hear personal testimonies from team members about life before becoming a Christian as well as after. It's good for all of us to hear how others have endured the same struggles mm -hmm. that we have. Yeah. May God richly bless you individually and the Hope Sabbath School team as a whole. Well, Steve, thank you for reminding us the testimony is not to bring attention to us, but maybe encouragement to someone watching around the world who will say, well, if God could do that for Lilika, or God could do that for Kylinda, or Stephanie, or Jackson, He could do it for me. And the answer is yes. If you call upon the name of the Lord, if you stand firm in the Lord, you can experience that blessing too. So, Steve, thanks so much for writing to us. Here is a note from Absalom in Tanzania. Just a short note, but Absalom says, Hello, Hope Sabbath School members. Hello. Got a wave in Jesus' name, he writes. I've been watching Hope Sabbath School for over five years now, and I am learning a lot. And he is an elder of his church there in Tanzania. Well, thanks for writing to us, Absalom. We're glad that you are using your teaching and leadership talents to bless the lives of others in your community. Well, here's a little handwritten note from a donor in Texas. Thank you, donor. You know who you are. You say, hey, that's my note. And while we don't read names, we do want to say thank you. The donor writes, God is with you all. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 That's enough, isn't it? God is with you all. To God be the glory. I would like my donation to go to Hope Sabbath School. Keep up the good work. Jesus is coming soon, and I'm 94 years old. Amen. Wow. Amen. Well, I just want to say to this uh, precious donor in Texas, thank you, not only for the gift to help the global evangelistic media ministry of Hope Channel, of Hope Sabbath School in particular, but thank you for that encouraging note. And God bless you as you let the sh light of Jesus shine through you there in the great state of Texas. One last note from a country we don't hear from frequently, Mali. Mali in West Africa. Thanks be to God, writes As. A-S, As. Thanks be to God. The Hope Sabbath School team are the best Bible teachers we have for the public right now. <laughs> well, I want to say thank you, Stephanie, for you teaching, but I know we've prayed for the Holy Spirit yes, to right. empower you. Mm -hmm. But someone in Mali is saying, praise God Amen. for a clear teaching of the Word of God. Amen. May God grant you favor of a sound mind. Oh, I like this. 
Thank you, Az, for writing. <laughs> a sound mind, humility, Amen. health, yeah. and longevity. Amen. Well, we're planning to live forever, so Amen. that's a long, long time. But Amen. yes, keep, keep us humble before the Lord. Amen. Sound mind, good health. Amen. Thanks for writing to us, Az, all the way from Mali. We're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. You know, we've been offering a free resource for this whole series. The book, Acts of the Apostles, a digital copy available in more than 20 languages by going to our website, clicking on the free gift tab. But in the last program, I was impressed. In fact, as I was praying about the topic that Stephanie's going to lead us in today, I was impressed to offer a, another free gift just for this program. And the last program, we dealt with this topic. It's a little book called Radical Protection. A digital copy of that book is waiting for you. You say, Derek, why would I need that? Just wait until you've heard this hour of interactive, in-depth study of the Word of God in Ephesians 6. And you'll want to go to the website, hopetv.org slash hopess. Click on the free gift tab. Not only is that wonderful resource about the ministry of the apostles there, but this resource on radical protection is there as a gift to you. But right now, we're going to sing. I like to hear you sing, even though I only can imagine. But sometimes you come visit me and say, I know the song and I like it. I want to walk worthy of the calling with which we've been called. Let's sing it together. to walk worthy of the calling I therefore beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called with holiness and gentleness with long suffering bearing with one You know, I was thinking, as Stephanie leads us in prayer, I was thinking that part of walking worthy of the calling is standing firm in the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess we can stand firm even while we're walking <laughs> yeah. when the Lord is with us. Yeah. Amen. Let's, let's pray together, Stephanie. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can stand firm in you. Yes. Lord, as we study this very important topic today, I pray that our trust and our faith would be fully fastened in your word and in your strength. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So in a previous study, our last study on the book of Ephesians, we learned something. Do you remember what that was? There is something that's happening in behind the scenes. There's your hint. <laughs> Gladys. There is a, a, a struggle 
in the heavenly realms. It's just like away from, from, from outside of our control, but we have to stand in the Lord. There's a struggle, Jason. And that struggle affects us and how we interact and the things that we're dealing with in this life right now. So Jason, you're saying, you're both saying that the struggle, the battle is real. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And therefore it's relevant to you and me, right? Yes. Right. Something's happening that we need to be aware of. As we consider that, today we're going to be talking about uh, the armor of God. Hmm. Praise God, he doesn't leave us alone mm -hmm. in the battle. He yes. gives us something to protect us. So as we begin, we're just going to take an overview, uh, read through all of the verses that we'll be studying, and then we'll go back and look through each one individually. Uh, Kailinda, would you be willing to start us off in our study? Ephesians chapter 6, looking at verses 10 through 20. Of course. So I'm reading Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20, and this is the King, New King James Version. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So is this admonition from the Apostle Paul for individual Christians or for the church collectively? <laughs> I think, I think it's, for, it's thing for everyone because um, it's just, uh, we are all in this world, therefore we're all in the bottle. Mm. Thank you, Travis. In verse 18, it says it's for all saints. Mm. I just caught that while I was reading that. <laughs> it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think, uh, if I may add, that it's for everyone individually, but also as a body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if, if there's a battle, and we are indeed not only the body of Christ, but we are also the army of Christ, mm -hmm. covered with His supernatural mm -hmm. protection, then we are also supposed to work together. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So I think it's both for us individually and, and corporately. Mm -hmm. Individually and corporately, yes, Kylinda. Well, when I was reading this, um, what they're talking about is putting on armor, and it seems like something that a soldier would wear or that a guard would wear. And you, you don't have one soldier. You have an <laughs> army. So yep. even though it's talking about the individual soldier, you don't go into battle unless you're with a group and an army. So I think there is this element that it is a call to the church as well mm -hmm. as the individual. Yes, and we, of course, we saw protective, um, protective armor, but there were two uh, primary weapons. Did you notice that in verse 17, the last part of 17 and 18? What were those two weapons? It says the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God, mm -hmm. all right. Another one? Prayer. Prayer. Oh. All right. The shield of faith? Is that what you're saying? I so, suppose you could hit someone with the shield, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but ac actually, the sword of the Spirit and, I wanted, and prayer. I wanted to mention there, there are different words in Greek for sword. This makaira is a short fighting sword. Mm -hmm. It's not like some fancy decorative <laughs> thing, you know, like I'm going to a, 
some big event and I've got my decorative sword. Mm -hmm. We learned uh, in our previous study about wrestling, mm -hmm. like face to face. Mm. This, this is, this, this sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, yes. yeah. is a powerful weapon when the attack is really intense. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, let me ask you this then. <laughs> How can the Word of God be used as a weapon? Mm -hmm. Jonathan. Um, it, it can unfortunately be done in a not so good way. I mean, you can use it to kind of um, beat over someone that disagrees with you, but in a good way, I mean, it, it is set, the Bible says that it divides between flesh and what's uh, Marrows. soul, marrow, and mm -hmm. so it discerns the issues of the heart, it uh, exposes, um, it provides faith, it provides truth and uh, things that we can trust in God's character and many things along those lines. Mm -hmm. Jason. Jesus himself used the word of God as a weapon when he was in wrestling against the devil. He was tempted by the devil and the devil was coming to him and at each point Jesus responded by using the word of God, by quoting scripture. And so mm -hmm. Jesus himself used the word of God as a weapon in that way to deflect mm -hmm. from the attacks of the devil. And so are you suggesting that that's a way that we could use the word of God as well, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Has there ever been a time when you used uh, the Word of God and prayer as a source of strength at, when you were fighting against the powers of darkness, oh the my. kingdom of this world? Well, when we have like a lot of uh, issues coming at us, you know, my favorite one is don't be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, bring your request before God you know, and the peace of God. And he just reflect on that, the peace of God. And I repeat that over and over till I can feel my spirit just mm. coming down. Mm. Is, is there a time that you can think of where you specifically recall the blessing of claiming the promise of scripture mm -hmm. and in prayer? Yeah, I know you want to go to each section, right? The protective <laughs> armor and the offensive yes. armor, but you're asking for a testimony. And in that a book that we're offering radical protection I share a story where I got a phone call from a professor at Southern Adventist University because a young lady was acting very strange in their house and when I got there and I won't share the whole story but a demon spoke out of her mouth mm -hmm. and said she opened her life to me mm. and that was just like really startling and I won't share the whole story but yes. instantly a scripture came to my mind, mm. Mm. which raises it, this Bible. You can't hit things with the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's the word that's in, in yes. the Bible yes. Yes. that is the weapon. Mm -hmm. And and what's interesting, and I'll end the story here, is the text that instantly came to my mind was the very passage you're leading us through today. And as I prayed Ephesians 6, the armor of God, a miracle happened. Mm. Afterwards, the young lady who was set free by the power of Jesus mm -hmm. said, every piece of the armor that you prayed, new strength came to me. Amen. Amen. So what we're studying here is not just theory. That's mm -hmm. right. And if someone wants to read the rest of the story, go, they can go to our website, but it's real. Mm -hmm. I, I right. learned that day, it's not just kind of some funny little thing, you can buy a plastic, armor of God for your children to put on a play. It is, it, it is supernatural protection. Amen. Because we are in a battle with supernatural powers and yeah. without Jesus, mm. we're not... We're lost. That's yes. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was there anyone who wanted to share another testimony? All right. Let's move on then to Ephesians chapter 6, looking at verses 11 and 13. Amy, if you would read that for us, Ephesians chapter 6, 11 and 13. And we're looking for key action verbs. Okay, and I'll be reading from the New American Standard Version. Ephesians 6, verses 11 and 13. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything, to stand firm. Mm. Mm. So what are some key action verbs <laughs> that you see there? 
is Amy to put on. Mm -hmm. It is something that we have to do. It doesn't happen passively. This is an active thing that we have to be equipping ourselves. God's made them available, but like all gifts that he's given us, we have to actually accept it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Put on. Derek? So I was just thinking about that same story because after this young lady was set free, she said, we've got to pray. There are other people who mm. don't realize they need supernatural protection. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that while we have a choice to put on or take up, I do believe that if we pray in Jesus' name mm. yes. for someone yes. to be covered with the armor, it will be given unless mm. they willfully reject it. Mm. Yes. And when the enemy says, why are you protecting that, that young man or that young woman or that older person? The Lord will say, my child cried out to me mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. on behalf of this person yes. to cover them. Amen. So Amen. I think there is a place mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, much like uh, some of you may have a small child and, you know, you put the seatbelt on the child because mm -hmm. you want them to be safe just in case something strikes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you you can yes. do that. Now, I suppose when they're old enough, they can go boop and push <laughs> the button and say, I don't want that protection. Mm. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I do want to encourage people today as we study about the armor, there may be someone that needs you to pray for her today, mm -hmm. to pray for him. Amen. Uh, while they may not be praying for themselves. Mm -hmm. And Derek, I, I was just thinking about praying in the name of Jesus. <laughs> because there is power in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, it reminded me of a, a mission trip before I was going on a mission trip that a presence came into my room mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. depressed the bottom of the bed. I could feel it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I spoke the name of Jesus, that's all I could get out immediately, it dissipated. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And we know that that when that happens, that it wasn't of God, right. right? Right. But we know the power in the name of Jesus when we recognize Him as our Lord and Savior of our lives, we can call on Him with full confidence. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and trust Him. Praise Amy, God. you wanted to share something. I've had similar experiences when we were living in Asia where mm -hmm. the spirit realm is People just live with it on a daily basis. Mm. They, it, we even had friends who tell, told us that they could smell spirits when they were there. They're mm. just very tangible. And we had experiences, I had experiences of spirit oppression where Satan was actively trying to terrify me and scare me. And I did the same thing, you know, singing all the songs I could think of that had Jesus' name in it and, <laughs> and that fear would go away. Amen. Um, and I think going back to what Pastor Derek said, there's power in intercession. And it's something that we don't fully understand, but when you think about it in the context of the armor of God that we can wrap our minds around, I can picture a sword, I can picture the helmet and the, the shield. If we think about it in that context that we're claiming and we are, we're fighting, we're standing in the gap for somebody, that's really powerful. Not just to me to empower my faith, but it does something spiritually. There is, there is a definite power to that. Jonathan. Yeah, um, I want to be cautious about how I say this, but I think we do have to be careful. I mean, in the spiritual realm, we do know that the devil is a deceiver, and I, I believe there's plenty of evidence that there's many people that experience spiritual experiences that lead them to believe things. So I, I guess I, I didn't entirely hear um, Pastor Derek's story, but I know some people use kind of the armor as kind of an, an amulet. Like the kind of like you, you, you pray the this amulet over someone else, and I, 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 I when I read it, it is specific to a person. I mean, like y you can't put on truth without it being applied to a person. Like th there is there is an actual interaction in the person's mind. There's something. So I, I guess I, I would be careful. There's a lot of things that you hear people doing, and they work. But when you actually compare what they say to Scripture, it's, yeah, I think it's important. Whatever, whether something works in the spiritual world does not mean it's necessarily true. Even if it's an amazing story, we have to come back and say, okay, does 
the symbols and things actually correlate to what scripture actually means. So that was my And an example that. for yes. that would be someone saying, I don't need to pray for this supernatural protection mm -hmm. because I carry this rabbit's foot in my mm -hmm. pocket. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's helped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No and, doubt. And the, the, demons, mm -hmm. the demons say, well, we've really deceived that person because they, we don't care what deceives them except that they've disconnected from trusting mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So you're right, it's not a little trick, mm. but it is something, as Amy pointed out, that Christians need, and mm. it's not automatic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're told to take it up, to put it on. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Amy. And I think it's, that's why it's really important that God has given us the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word, which is truth. Mm. You know, David said in Psalm 119, your word is truth, mm. right? And we know that Satan is deceiving. Well, what's deception? It's not truth. Mm. And so we must be using mm. the Bible. We must be comparing things and experiences with the Bible to see, are they true? Are they really real? Or are we being deceived again? Amen. Mm. Yes. Let's, let's move on to Ephesians chapter 6 again in verse 14, the first part of verse 14. And Leah, would you read that for us? Ephesians 6, uh, 14. Ephesians chapter 6, the first part of verse 14 in the English Standard Version says, Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. All right, the belt of truth, and this is going back to what you said, Amy, the relevance of making sure that truth, the Word of God, is our foundation. So why then is it important or vitally important that we have on the belt of truth. And while you're thinking about that, mm -hmm. um, Jackson, if you would go ahead and read for us First uh, Peter 1.13, and this may shed a little bit more light on our conversation as it relates to, my Bible says, girding your, uh, the loins with truth. Go ahead, Jackson. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so why is it vitally important, Can Jonathan? Can I pull a verse from last week? <laughs> sure. I think this applies perfectly in, in And my, which verse would you like to So, 2 Corinthians read. 10, 3 through 5. 2 Corinthians 10 verses three, three through, five. through five. Let's just take a minute to get there. Second Corinthians 10, mm -hmm. verses three through, through five. five. All right, thank you. Go ahead. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. No. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion which raises it against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. So yeah. to me, it, it, is, it is amazing how many times, how focused it, truth is in each of those pieces. It's mm -hmm. divine power to destroy these, these, these arguments, this, this, these lies, these um, mm -hmm. things that, that are so real in our world, and so truth is vital to that. So truth is what is educating. The Word mm -hmm. of God educates our mind that we may stand firm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson. So in this day and age, there's a lot of things that can get into our mind. Wherever we see, whatever we hear, there's a lot of factors uh, around us which are feeding us the lies of Satan. So we should be very careful uh, of feeding ourselves with the Word of God. If we are not uh, strong with the Word of God, then we are going to be deceived by Satan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Travis. So one thing about a belt is that it secures a garment. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about this in the context of Christ's righteousness. We're covered in his robe. He gives us that robe of righteousness. 
And in all these verses that Jonathan was just sharing, and in First Peter we were just talking talking about, talk about God's goodness and God's grace. Uh, we know that we're saved by grace alone through faith alone, and Christ covers us with his righteousness. And I believe that it's his truth that helps to keep that righteousness secure. All right, and Travis, while we're talking about righteousness, if you would be willing to read the rest of that verse, Ephesians <coughs> chapter 6, verse 14, we see more about this righteousness. Would you read that for us? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. All right, Amen. thank you, Travis. Mm. And Jason, would you read 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 8? And we're going to compare what Travis just read to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 8. The New King James Version says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. So how does righteousness and faith and love protect us? Travis, did you want to share with us what you were thinking on that? I was actually when I was studying this lesson. Um, this is what I came up with. Righteousness saves us. Mm. Faith encourages us, encourages us, and love keeps us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Travis. Jason. And all of these are gifts from God. We've been told we've been given a measure of faith. The love of God is poured out into our hearts. And as Travis just talked about, it's Christ's righteousness that saves us, not our righteousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jonathan. Yeah, and some of the lies that the devil throws at us is that, you know, you are too um, unworthy to be saved or you can't um, trying to trap us in our sins, and so righteousness is core to that. Amen. Yes, Gladys. Well, you know, in, in this day and age, truth is subjective to the person who's saying the circumstances. So in this world right now, truth shifts, and God is telling here, you know, that 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 He is the truth. He said, "I am the truth." His word is the truth. So. Brace yourself, cover yourself, mm. protect your heart, your mind with the truth, which is Jesus Christ. All right, so we have the belt of truth and we have the breastplate of righteousness. We also know faith and love, mm -hmm. part of the breastplate. Now, let's go to verse 13 and 15. And this is talking about protection of the feet. <laughs> protection of the feet. So let's see. Shana, would you be willing to read that for us? Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 and 15. Why, as she's reading, ask yourself the question, why is protection of our feet part of the armor of God? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. In verse 15, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Hmm. Hmm. Why is there protection for the, our feet? Hmm. Yes, Leah. God tells us to go into all the world and proclaim the news of salvation. So how else can we do that other than by bringing peace and going? Our feet take us places. Yeah. So we need our feet to take us places and yeah. peace to be able to do it. Yes, and Leah, while I have you there, why, why is peace so relevant mm. for our time today? Why mm. is it so relevant mm. for us today? to be carrying the gospel of peace. To build off of what was just said, I think it was Gladys, you know, truth is subjective these days and mm. people want what they want for selfish reasons. And mm. it's very hard to find peace that can only come from God. Yes. Um, and as I've said, mm -hmm. you know, in previous studies, it we, we have a love as Christians, as believers in Christ that the world doesn't understand because they don't know God yet. And that also applies to peace. Yeah. God provides us with a peace that passes all understanding that the world will be attracted to because it's not a peace that they understand yet. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Leah. 
And Haiti, would you take us to John chapter 14, verse 27? John chapter 14, verse 27. Sure. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hmm. Thank you, Haiti. Why is peace so relevant? Go ahead, Shana. So, the devil is the, the author of confusion, mm -hmm. and with confusion comes despair and just a, a myriad of, of different negative emotions, and, mm -hmm. and it causes people to just not function in, in a peaceful way. And so mm -hmm. us having the gospel that we do um, mm -hmm. and having the gospel of peace mm -hmm. can help others and help people who are in that state of confusion to recognize that this difference is is just what I need. Mm -hmm. All right, Jackson. Mm -hmm. We have learned that the, a, lot, a large part of the warfare is mental. Mm -hmm. So we need to take the right decisions. There's a lot going on. We need to believe, trust in God, have faith. The warfare has a lot to do with how we think. Mm -hmm. I think peace, having the peace, will help us take the right decisions for the Lord. Mm. Amen. Amen. Haiti. I think that specifically when we're talking about spiritual warfare, um, as our human nature would be to feel afraid, mm -hmm. to be uh, completely terrified and feel overwhelmed and like we don't have anything that we can do against this. Um, but God is telling us don't focus on, on that, don't focus on the enemy but focus on the fact that in me, you have victory. In, in me, there's nothing impossible for God. He can, he can have victory over that spiritual thing or over that, that issue that you're facing in your life. He has the victory and that should give us peace, remembering that instead of just focusing on the issue. Mm. Thank you, Haiti. Amy. This morning, I was just talking to a, a new believer friend of mine who's a member of our church Sabbath school class. And he, he's been experiencing some real physical problems in his life. He's mm -hmm. a little bit older and just struggling with health problems and had another issue yesterday and sent out this text last night, please pray for me, I don't know what's happening, you know. And, and this morning we were connecting with him, how are you doing? And he said, you know, I'm not doing well physically, but I can't explain the peace that I have. Wow. Mm -hmm. Knowing God. that God is with me and that God is going to direct my path, Amen. I don't have to worry about it. He Amen. said, and I can't, I can't explain it, but mm -hmm. it's a peace that only comes from God. Amen. Peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, we have to move on. I know um, mm -hmm. this is a, we just want to stay on one, so. Uh, <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, and Lilika, if you would read verse 16 for us, verse of Ephesians chapter 6. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Above all, take the shield of faith with, with which you will be able to quench all the fire darts of the wicked one. So mm -hmm. what in, uh, important insights can we find in that verse on this shield of faith? Mm -hmm. Jonathan. What strikes me is that it's, it's all, all of the flaming darts of the evil one are extinguished by faith. Um, it just, it seems very strong that like how much, um, how much of the things that, that hit us are really, the, the answer is trust in God, is dem trusting in his faithfulness and that he can get us through um, anything and everything, Amen. and um, that brings peace as we have talked about Right, before. which is a huge blessing, right? Mm. It also implies that there will be fiery darts yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. that we will need to protect ourselves against, right? Yeah. Jason. So darts are sharp points that hit at specific places on your body, and so kind of what it says is that we all may have 
points in our life or in our experience where the devil will mm -hmm. shoot at us specific points with his fiery darts. But as Jonathan was saying there, the answer for all of these is having faith, trusting in God that he can take care of all those points, even our weak points mm -hmm. that the devil might want to shoot against us. Amy. You know, in the story of David and Goliath, we know that Goliath had an armor bearer and he stood in front of Goliath with the shield. And I think that as Christians, we have that role to play as well. We talked about that a little bit earlier, that we can stand in the gap and that we can have faith for people when Satan is throwing these fiery darts at them. Like my friend, when he was sick last night, we could text him and say, don't lose faith. God is with you even in this. Mm -hmm. And and to build him up and to, to quench those fiery darts mm -hmm. of doubt and, mm. and deception that Satan wanted to distract him with. Mm. Right. So discouragement is one of the darts mm -hmm. that could be mm -hmm. shot at us our way. I just wanted to thank Amy for that powerful insight. Never thought mm. of that before, but the text when she talked about using that shield, which was kind of full body mm. protection. This is yeah. not a little decorative shield, but <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what the Roman shield was like, it's big full protection. They could create a wall when they all mm. joined next to each other. But that idea that I could step in front of mm -hmm. someone to help mm -hmm. reminded mm. me of the word of the Apostle Paul, to bear one another's mm -hmm. burdens yes. mm -hmm. and so fulfill the law of Christ. That yes. it is a loving thing to do to say, well, at least I'm protected, but you're not. I mean, especially mm. think if it's your son mm -hmm. or your daughter or mm -hmm. your best friend where God says, go and go now mm -hmm. and stand, to use the expression that Amy used, stand in the gap mm -hmm. with the shield of faith and all of the fiery darts. Mm. That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> One more comment. Go ahead, Gladys. Well, even in the times of Jesus, we see how, how faith play a key part in all of his miracles. He will say to the people, you know, you a little faith, you know, what do you want me to do? He want them to exercise faith. So faith is very important for us to to really understand the heart of God. Yes. All right, let's move on to verse 17. And Jonathan, would you read that for us? Uh, the first part of verse 17. All right, I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. And take the helmet of salvation. All right, mm -hmm. so how does our acceptance of the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, actually act as a protection for our minds. Hmm. Gladys. Yeah, just like J uh, Jackson said earlier, you know, the bottle is in, most of the bottle is in our minds. So when we have that conviction, not just belief, but conviction that we are saved, that Jesus' blood and sacrifice saves us, it just gives that layer of protection mm -hmm. for our mm -hmm. thoughts, our minds, our emotions. Yep. It gives us hope, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because our hope is founded in Him mm -hmm. versus in whatever else Ourselves. we see, yeah. the turmoil that we see going on in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone else. Travis. So um, go Satan has always tried to get the human being to doubt um, his or her sonship in Christ to whom we belong. Mm -hmm. yeah. The helmet of salvation, when, when we accept Jesus as our Savior, the Bible says, Oh, what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we might be called the sons, sons of, of God. God. When we yeah. accept that salvation, that mm -hmm. gift of salvation, we become mm -hmm. heirs. We become sons and daughters of God. Mm -hmm. And to know where and to whom we belong is vitally important to the Christian walk. So having that sense of sonship that to know who we belong to uh the helmet of salvation is just really i think vitally important uh in the christian walk amen mm -hmm. thank you travis so we have studied so far we know that there's a a real battle right yes. mm -hmm. which is why we need that protection that is provided yep. but now we're going to look at the weapons the offensive weapons that we can use. We're going to look a little deeper yes. and we'll look at the verse 17, the last part of verse 17. And Jason, would you take us there? The New King James Version says in Ephesians chapter 6, the second part of verse 17, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. 
-hmm. all right? And we, we discovered previously in our lesson today that Jesus used the word mm -hmm. of God, and that yes. was in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And can you think of any other Bibles? Oh, in the wilderness. Yeah, the wilderness. Oh, sorry, in the wilderness. <laughs> yes. When he's tempted. He probably yeah. used it in... in, in <laughs> yeah. but, True, but I was thinking of the wilderness. Thank you for yes. correcting that. Um, certainly there are other stories where the Word of God were, was used in the Bible. Can you think of any of those stories? Mm. Kailinda? I was thinking when Jesus visited the city of Samaria, and he goes and he's sitting at this well and he has this conversation with this woman. And there was a lot of conflict, you know, that could have existed because they both come from different ethnic backgrounds. There was a gender division at that time period. And when he speaks with her, he offers her this gift of salvation and he describes worship as worshipers who worship in spirit and truth. And he says, God is spirit and those who worship will worship in spirit and truth. She goes home and, you know, she has this revelation moment where all of the town comes out and they're interested in meeting Jesus, not because he raised someone from the dead or because he performed, you know, this miraculous healing, but they saw spirit and truth in her words and in her testimony and mm. changed lives. And I think this is what draws people to Jesus and what draws us into true worship. Amen. So his word impacts who I am mm -hmm. because I'm, in uh, putting it on and putting it in my head mm -hmm. and therefore others are impacted by what happens, right? Mm -hmm. His yeah. word is powerful enough to change my character, That's just right, a spoken man. word. Yes, Derek. I think of uh, Peter and John, they, they had been told by Jesus, if you ask anything in my name, you can ask it that the Father may be glorified okay. in the Son. So they're walking to the temple to pray and they see this crippled man. <laughs> and I do believe we have to be guided by the Spirit because they didn't stop everywhere for everyone, but convicted by the Holy Spirit of God, Jesus said, we'll guide you into all truth. They say, we don't have silver or gold, but in the name of Jesus. I mean, they were really quoting what Jesus had just said, right? Yeah. In the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. So I think, uh, I think that's one example. And to, at least from my perspective, I think maybe it even surprised them how bold they were. <laughs> because the Holy Spirit gives us boldness. And, and yet they were saying, yes, that's right. That's what Jesus said in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have there been Bible promises that have given you encouragement? I see a lot of heads <laughs> nod, nodding, all right. Does anyone want to share a time when a Bible verse gave you encouragement and what was the Bible verse? All right, Jackson. When I was preparing for some exams that, were, that I was about to take, um, I would be sometimes discouraged that there's a lot of things to study and that I do not know much and that I'm going to fail the exam. Uh, mm -hmm. That time, this verse in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Mm -hmm. Will remind me that I need to spend time with God mm -hmm. rather than on books. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I spent that time with God, I got the peace uh, that God is in control and that I can rely upon him rather than on my own strength and wisdom and knowledge. So after that, uh, I wrote that on my desk so that every time I study, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll be reminded that I should not trust on my own strength. And by God's grace, I passed the exam. Amen. 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 <laughs> Gladys. Yes, I just got an, a new position on my job. And at the moment, I felt like I knew what entitled, but once I started studying and seeing the scope of the, of the job, I felt so afraid and overwhelmed. And I remember sitting in my desk and I have a big sign in front of my desk that says, Gladys, you know that God knows exactly what you need before you ask. I have that verse kind of rewarded to my, to, 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 
me personally. And also I have another one that says, if, any, if you n lack wisdom, ask God and he will abundantly give you. So every morning I just sit there before I start my work and I say those verses to myself. And it's just amazing how God works things out. Amen. And how did, how did you know Gladys those verses? Studying, right? spending time in the okay. Bible in the morning. <laughs> Isaiah and James, you quoted. All right, let's move on to, uh, thank you for sharing, verse 18, because we want to talk about another offensive weapon. And uh, Travis, would you read this for us? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Hmm. All right, so thank you, Travis. There is power in prayer, right? That's why it's so effective as a, a weapon. Can you think of any stories in the Bible where prayer was had and power was seen? Haiti. So one of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel and how he mm. faces the prophets of Baal and represents God mightily in a, in a day and age where the people of God didn't know who to uh, bow down and, and who was the true God. And I just thought it was an amazing story. And then one day in James chapter 5, verse 17, um, it says, I had never heard this, and it says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And I didn't even know that insight about the story, that it wasn't just because God was like, I'm not going to make it rain. Obviously, God willed it because God uh, answered that prayer, but it was due to the prayer of Elijah that that powerful um, act of, of a drought coming that led to this succession of all these other events happening took place. And I, I remember um, hearing from an author that angels stand in awe and look at us at humanity just in shock because we have access to this limitless power and yet we don't use it as often as we should. Mm. And, and and this uh, verse to me just really uh, compounded that, just really sealed that for me that, man, I really need to be tapping into this. And I encourage whoever is watching, you know, remember that we have a God for whom nothing is impossible. Amen. And all we have to do is go and ask our Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Haiti. That's beautiful. You know, on the same story, Stephanie, and, and just the appeal not to be careless, Elijah must have prayed you know, Lord got into mm -hmm. your hands because there were 400 mm -hmm. priests with swords. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They would love to have killed him, these priests of Baal. They would yes. love to have killed him, you know. But he was shielded. Mm -hmm. And I, I, think, I think, you know, I'm just God, God speaking to me now and saying, Derek, don't be careless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are in great danger in this world where there's a great battle between good and evil. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, and accepting that protection and praying in the spirit mm -hmm. on all occasions mm -hmm. for all kinds of prayers, right? Mm -hmm. And pray for everyone, pray for all the saints. Just mm -hmm. so vitally important. Yes, Amen. and it's interesting. We need to move on to the last two verses here, verse 19 and 20 in our passage for today. Uh, Lalika, if you would read that for us. It, there's some specific guidance on praying. Mm -hmm. All right, Lalika, would you read that for us? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And for me, the utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I want to speak. Mm. So Amen. here we see the request for prayer that he may mm. speak boldly, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Why is it so important to pray for our spiritual leaders? Mm. Mm. Why is that critical? 
Well, Gladys. like we said before, truth is subjective these days, and sometimes uh, our leaders are afraid to, 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 to say something that is not socially acceptable or to offend somebody. But when we are praying for our leaders, that the Lord, that the word of the Lord will be in their lips, that the, mm -hmm. when they speak, will be transforming the lives of those who hear. Mm -hmm. It is just so powerful because they will speak with power Amen. and authority the word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. How and, and also remember, we're in a battle. Mm -hmm. yep. And if the devil can bring our spiritual leaders down, yep. mm. what will that do with our other folks yeah. um, that are following them? I want to leave us with the, a promise, all right? Some Bible, mm -hmm. a Bible verse, um, Romans chapter 8, verses 37 to 39. And let's see, who would read that for us, Amy? Sure. Romans chapter 8. 37 to 39 as we wrap up our study for today. And I'm reading from New American Standard Version. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through mm -hmm. Him who loved us. Amen. Mm -hmm. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any <laughs> other created <laughs> thing, will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> the battle's real. Mm -hmm. yeah. The armor's real. Yes. Amen. And God is real. Amen. Amen. And much more powerful than the works of darkness. Amen. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much, Stephanie. What a powerful study. Thank you so much for joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. Don't forget those two special gifts we have for you at our website hopetv.org slash hopess. Not only the wonderful research volume on the work of the apostles, but also that little book, Radical Protection. You say, Derek, I want to stand firm in the Lord and not be afraid, but walk in the strength that He gives. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we've studied about the protection in different pieces of armor, but, but overarching is the fact that you love us and want to cover us against the fierce attacks of Satan and his evil forces. Thank you that the scripture teaches that you will have the ultimate victory. May we find our strength and our peace in you even today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School today. You know, God has not given us, Paul said to Timothy, a spirit of fear but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. And that sound mind comes when we believe the truth of God's word, that greater is the one who is in us than the one who is in the world. Trust in Jesus, your awesome savior and your strong deliverer. Find peace in him today and go out my friend and be a blessing to those around you.